Tickets for my live audience with UFC superstar Paddy the Baddy on the 7th of January in Liverpool are now available on Skiddle. Paddy will be doing his first live audience and what a night we have planned. We have a meet and greet and photo opportunity with Paddy. You also can get to ask Paddy some questions. We've also got special guests appearing. This is going to be a night not to be missed and what a way to start off the new year. See you all soon. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you are notified for when my next podcast goes live. I used to have so many registration plates in my head of cash and transits, like doing deliveries at petrol stations or filling up ATM machines at different locations. I used to have sleepless nights thinking that's going to be there on Wednesday. I know it's a crazy story, like having my brother shot and being in prison for such a long time, but to me it was kind of normal where I'm around so many people like that who's been in prison for like 20 years and doing 30 year sentences, it felt kind of normal. The first six weeks of being out, I kind of wanted to go straight back in. That was, it was nice, don't get me wrong, it is so nice to be out and physically be able to cuddle my daughter, but I was thinking this is pretty hard out here to, to do a 70 year sentence and to come out in debt it wasn't great was it to me i should have been there i'm i was committing armed robbery whereas some people were doing like stabbings or shootings and you can blatantly tell they don't want to be part of that mm -hmm. some of them wasn't even um, the person who pull, pulled the trigger they don't want to be there Boom, we on. And we've got back, Lewis Clark. How are you, Lewis? Back again, man. Nice to see you, man. Good to see you, bro. First podcast, nearly quarter of a million views. Look, phenomenal, mad story. Former bank robber, changed your life. Your dad's in prison. But you're out trying to do the right things now. You've got your own YouTube channel, which we'll plug straight away. What's that? Uh, Big Lou Jim Boss. Um, also Instagram, Big Lou Jim Boss. How are you dealing with it? The kind of limelight, social media side of things? Do you know what? I just need to say uh, thank you to a lot of people who reached out after the podcast with you. Um, loads of nice messages, positive messages, asking like work-wise, come and work with me. Is there anything I can do? So to everyone who sent me their messages, I appreciate all of you. Yeah. Because I think people see you, like, you are a good guy. We've remained friends and that's the important thing that these platforms can give people a leg up to create a better life for themselves because it ain't fucking easy man like, it's difficult out there like what we want to do is survive and as you can tell I put on a bit of weight mate so. I, can, I can see what, <laughs> what is happening there mate <laughs> that's a proper bit of pudding there mate <laughs> it's cold up in Scotland mate all we've got all I, all I do is do podcasts and then go home and eat I can see <laughs> but how are you dealing with the kind of life outside of prison do you know what I've been out um, a year next month and um, I'm I'm still adjusting. I'm still adjusting to things. Uh, my life's getting a lot more easier because I, I know which direction I want to go in and that now. Uh, the relationship with my daughter is building up. Uh, we've been doing a bit of shopping together, messing about. Um, she's in secondary school now. Things are proper looking up for me. I'm really like, I'm starting to enjoy life again. Were you surprised how big your story was? Yeah, I was and I wasn't because... I know it's a crazy story, like having my brother shot and being in prison for such a long time. But to me, it was kind of normal where I'm around so many people like that. who's been in prison for like 20 years and doing 30 year sentences. It felt kind of normal. It's not until people started reaching out to me and I'm thinking, oh, my God, like people actually care about me. And um, that gave me a little bit more motivation to want to do better with myself. How's your dad getting on? We know he's inside. Yeah, shout out Big Tom, man. Can't wait yeah, to have you home. He's, do, he's doing so well now. Um, he's, his life's going to change. I, I just know it. He, he's such a character and I'm looking forward to having him back home again. Yeah, you still get a lot of people want you on the platforms as well. Like father and son bank robbers, there's not many people done that sort of shit. Like, I know we can laugh and joke, but it's still mad to think that that happened. Yeah, um, we, we've actually have, had a little talk about it and I promise you if we do, we'll be on We'll be on with you first. Good man, we're going to get maybe, what about possibly getting a book out for the future? Oh, definitely. I was thinking, I don't want to give away too many titles just in case someone nicks it and mm -hmm. that, but I've got a few little um, headlines in my head I want to use. 
Uh, it's just down to dad, really. I see how, what he wants to do because he's quite a private man as well. Yeah. How's your dad? And obviously, we know he's been active for many years, but how's he feeling this time about getting out? Are you going to see big changes or is a, do you think he could end up back inside? I think my dad's out now, you know. See, um, he's been doing open conditions and he's been, he works every single day outside the prison, grafting his ass off, dri driving around forklifts. And um, he, it seems like he's enjoying it. You know, I think he just wants a peaceful life now. And if we can get a little book out together and you can see like the rewards in things now, I think he might want to change. And I want to see him do a podcast because he's got so much better, he's got much better stories than me to tell on that, you know, and he's such a funny man. Um, so I'd love to get him on here. Mm -hmm. How's that like, adjusting? Like you've been out a year now, like I know you're saying it's still finding your ways, but have you adjusted quicker than you thought? Yeah, I, f I think I have. Um, like I said, it'll be a year next month. Um, I love London transport for some reason. I'm not driving at the minute. I've been booting around in my missus's car every now and again, but I've been taking London transport. So just jumping on the train from here to there and getting buses everywhere. I actually enjoy it. I've actually had a few people uh, sit next to me on the train and say, oh, Lou, I see, I see you on a podcast. And, and it's quite nice to have conversations with pe random people on the trains and that now. Mm -hmm. It's mad, isn't it? Experience that. Because of these podcasts and that, how stories can get out there, then people can look for inspiration, even though you've, people have done wrong in life. Yeah. You can also learn so much from that for people not to make the same mistakes, for people then to go, do you know what? He is a good guy because if you go to a job, they look at your record, you're yeah. not getting a job. I'll tell you what as well, since the last part, I've been on a few jobs. Proper jobs, by the way, um, <laughs> le legit jobs. Um, um, my, so some fellas got hold of me on Instagram. He's took me on a roofing job, you know, uh, cleaning roof tiles, yeah. the algae and the green stuff off it. Working's pretty hard, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Mate, he had some long pole with some jets coming off the top, getting this algae off the roofs and that. But he's gone to the top of the ladder. I'm meant to be holding the bottom of the ladder for him. I've took my foot off it for one second. The ladder's come straight down. Yeah, he's landed straight on his back. I was I was trying not to laugh. I was absolutely <laughs> dying in bits. Uh -huh. And he's let he's winded <gasps> laying on the floor. Um, uh -huh. but shout out Steve for that. I appreciate that day's yeah. work. That's hard work. Half seven in the morning. We done a bit of a dodgy job, to be honest. We didn't get back to nine at night. He kept doing uh, messing up so we had to um, come back get some more bleach and stuff to bleach the um, tiles mm. so I've done um, I've done a day with him then I've done a couple house clearances um, what else have I done I've done cleaning a patio I was doing some um, some couples patio with the, um, the the jet washers anyway he's like don't go too close with it because it will take up the thing as soon as he said that I've gone too close and it's ripped a bit of the patio off a bit of it's come straight off I was tried to plug it straight pushing it straight back in the floor and that and he said Lou did you do that I said no it's already there mm -hmm. so um apart from that I've been trying to do, concentrate on my YouTube stuff because I feel I've got somewhere to take it and I've got a good concept I just need to get a little bit more confidence a little bit um put a bit more thought into it because I know it can actually happen um so, and that's what really what I want to do I really want to get my YouTube stuff on the go and hopefully get a book out for next year as yeah. well but like you say you're just adjusting so many years in prison, all the shit that you've done to then, it's like both, it's totally night and day to try and make an honest living, to be climbing up ladders, to be fucking jet washing. Yeah. And part of your mind will be thinking, this is so hard for 50 quid, 100 quid a day, whatever it is you get. And yeah. you're thinking, like security cord drive, van drives past, you're thinking, it's easier. Oh, they seem to be absolutely everywhere at the minute as yeah, well. It's a I'm test. Yeah, there is a test. Sometimes I walk past and I see them like loading up at um, an ATM machine or walking into a bank. And I'm sure you lot are doing this on purpose now, you know. But um, I'll be honest, it's not crossed my mind once to grab one of them cassettes and go. It's not crossed my mind once. It's Christmas as well. The money is double, treble now. Oi, the money's there. But um, I, <laughs> I, 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 don't, I don't want no part of it in it anymore. I can actually see doors opening for me and I can see opportunities there. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's really, do you know what? Doing these podcasts has really put a lot of confidence back into me. And that, you know, I've got so much better in front of the cameras, so much better at talking to people. Um, I believe um, next year is going to be a pretty good year for me. Best year of your life? I think it possibly will be. Mm -hmm. I've already got Christmas presents out of the way for my daughter. She's already sorted. Mm -hmm. So I've just got to get the missus something now. How good is that feeling to be then free man, to be 
walking around with your daughter, getting Christmas presents in, talking about next year's going to be the best year of your life. Possibly when you're in prison, you're thinking, man, I'm just going to go straight active again. But then to come out and really go for it, and that's just for anybody watching, that people can change your, your inspiration that yeah. to be then staying solid because it's fucking hard out there. It's hard to survive. It's hard to put food on the table. Like, but how good do you feel with just, okay, knuckling down and, and going for it and that belief system that belief is important because what you believe you certainly can achieve and as cheesy as that is it's so yeah. important to believe that but how do you feel within that that you, you've stood your ground you've been out a year and you keep chipping away to then preparing yourself for bigger things basically yeah so w w when i was away um I, I i used to write down all my little ideas and my goals and set myself targets i've actually achieved everything in my, within my first year, what I'll put down, what I want to, what I want to get done. So it's about setting goals and hitting your targets. So I need to get some new targets and that written down for next year. Now, um, anyone who else is watching this, please, if you're getting released from prison, just make sure you've got some goals and that ready. Make sure you have a plan, come out with a plan. Don't just come out and don't know what you're going to do. You need to know what you could be doing before you get released. Yeah. See when you're just, what was your thought process coming out of prison the last, for your last time? From this sentence yeah. coming out, um, the first six weeks of being out, I kind of wanted to go straight back in. That was, it was nice. But don't get me wrong. It is so nice to be out and physically be able to cuddle my daughter. But I was thinking, this is pretty odd out here. Um, my routine started slipping away, you know, getting up at like half six in the morning, getting my free flow out the way at half eight, getting back for 12 o'clock. I started losing a bit of routine. Um, that's one thing I did actually like about prison to put me in routine, but um, I'm back on it now, getting up early, getting to the gym, getting work done. And um, I've been up and down. I've been up and down the UK with a, a fella called Silky. He's on tour at the minute. He does a lot of house music. So I've been up and down touring with him. So shout out Silky. Mm -hmm. So you're keeping busy, but you're connecting now to bigger names, more positive names, legit money, like, do you ever wake up and think like, what the fuck is this about like, why did I not choose this path sooner I messed up man I messed up there's so many opportunities um, there's so many opportunities out there and you just got to keep knocking at these doors you're going to get turned away from like three or four doors but please believe the fifth or sixth door is going to open for you you just got to be consistent with what you want to do and just keep knocking on these doors they will open I promise you has anybody ever came forward and tried to get you back into the old life though I've had, a, I've had a, one or two people said, Lou, you fancy this? And I said, definitely not. And it's pretty easy for me to walk away from that sort of life. Um, I'm still, um, I still see a lot of like people I grew up with who's still involved with certain things, but um, I love them from a distance now. It's not like I turn my back on them. I still see them say hello, still care about them, but I'm on a different path to what they're on. Do you feel as if they could turn on you because they feel as if you've turned on them? No, they fully respect what I'm doing. See, that's a good thing. They, yeah. That's important because a lot of people feel peer pressure where they feel as if I've not turned my back against you, I'll show you. And before you know it, they'll yeah. back into life and you're doing another big stretch. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. One good thing is like my, my circle's got smaller, which is a lot easier. Um, whereas before I, before I went to prison, I found myself helping so many people out. Now there's literally about six people around me, genuine people. They've all been helping me out in it as well, giving me motivation. How you sleep at night? Oh, do you know, I had a terrible sleep last night. So I, I'm I'm in a shared accommodation at the minute, and this geezer next door to me, I, he's got mental health problems, bless him. But um, last week he was standing naked in um outside my house, and it's raining. He's got his willy out, and last night he was having a he was having a great time. He sounded like he's having a party, and then the fellow who's living above me. All you can hear is these footsteps. So I, went, I got to sleep about five in the morning, got up at seven. I had a couple of hours sleep today. Because mm -hmm. I know you struggled with sleeping that back in the day. Yeah. Man. Now my sleep, it is getting better. It's just, I was a rubbish sleep last night. How's the shelter accommodation and stuff? Uh, it's not, it's not great. I need, uh, I've been in there seven months. I've done three months in a MAPA hostel and I've been in there about seven months now. So I'm waiting for a opponent house. How long have you got to do? Six months, 12 months? Yes, yeah, six to 12 months in the temporary and then sh surely I should get a permanent, maybe after Christmas. But you're hustling it out, mate. Like, you know how easy it is to get sucked back into crime when, especially when you're struggling, especially when you think, mm. but you've got your, like you're more confident now than you were the first time mm. because you believe, you believe. I but, can see it now. Yeah. I can see things. 
And how how important is that for you? For when you start seeing it and start believing it, because at the start you, it's hard to see things when there's so much darkness, so much clouds, so much negativity, the pain of the past. How when these clouds started moving, like how good a feeling was that? Oh, it's wicked. It's just doing th getting things done one at a time. You know, like at first thing, there's so many clouds that's in my way, I can't see nothing right now. But I've been out a year now and things are just slowly opening up for me. And you know what? I had a lot of people message me on Instagram, um, a few from Scotland. Shout out um, to the Scots. Shout out to the Scots. Um, a lot of mental people suffering mental health and that is, and thank you for your story. And we still check in with each other on Instagram. I give them a little message whenever I can. Like sometimes um, I can't get back to all of them, but um, I get back to as many as I can. So I'm glad they reach out. You can reach out whenever you want as well. Just don't fill up my DMs, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's hard though no, because it's... everybody's always, like because people watch these things and they truly are engrossed in what people's got to say. Like they, a lot of, that's when you know the world's a good place as well. I know a lot of people, we hear a lot of badness on the news and the radio, but people genuinely care that if bad things happen, the first thing a human being wants to do the majority of the time is help. Yeah. So if pe you're telling your story and people go, ah, do you know what, I, I like him, there's an opportunity that, it's all down to the individual. I says to him, you first come on the podcast, listen, you're going to get a big wave of people mm. and then it kind of dies down, it kind of fizzles. But thankfully you're on again and then we've got another few things in the pipeline. You've got your own show on YouTube, but you've got Danny Simpson coming on. Like, oh, shout out Danny Simpson. And mad nutter. bastard. Like, Absolute nutter. Yeah. I don't, I, I say to Danny every time he's on the podcast, I agree with absolutely nothing that he does, but there's That's something it. about him. You've, he's got, I don't, it's hard to explain. He's got character. Yeah, he? he's hard to explain, but if, I says in the podcast just there with Danny that if, I would never need him for anything but if I ever did and I phoned him he'd be there in the heartbeat he oh, he's that he's actually that person yeah. even just seeing him there a minute ago it's nice to see him as well you know we've got a little gym gym um, workout ready for next week as well so make sure you're ready Dan yeah like what do you think you'd, when your dad will come out do you think he'll adapt easier because he's out on home leaves yeah where he's been out on home leaves and he works outside the prison um He's going to be absolutely fine, you know. Um, he, he can do either or. Like, he's built for prison and I feel he can. he's adjusting a lot more to being outside now. Yeah. Obviously, back in the day, you were involved. Oh, I know the, the title of the last one, with Gang Leader. I know, you gang leader. I know you didn't like that, but it's just, it's clickbait titles and you were properly involved. You've like, done a lot of shit. You were involved with big names and a lot of the friends are in prison, a lot are dead. Yeah. Thankfully, you're still here, but... How hard is it to, to cut away from that gang culture? Yeah, so like I said, I still see a lot of lot of my old friends today. And um, I'm just going to love them from a distance. And they they all respect me enough now to know I'm not going to get back involved with all of that, you know. And even after the last podcast, someone from the other side, who we used to have dramas with growing up, said, like, I really respect what you've done on this podcast. and that. And this is someone we used to have a lot of trouble with growing up. So we we exchanged a few messages and that, and we just left it there. We're not friends or nothing, but it was it was just something we got left there. It's dead now, you know. Mm -hmm. That's a good thing, man. Oh, uh, it's wicked. I was I was happy he actually reached out. I'm not gonna say his name and that, but happy he reached out. And we kind of left it left it there. Mm -hmm. I've seen a few other people and that I used to have trouble with from Brixton and that, and we're all at the majors now. We look at each other, just acknowledge each other, and don't have to mm -hmm. be friends. Just quick nod of the head and just we just yeah. keep it moving. I think anybody with a bit of common sense though that can see. You get older, first of all, but you can also see that, okay, they're making a change. Like, a lot of people don't change as well. Mm. And a lot of people still have that anger or frustration from the past and don't really let go of grudges. But it just ends up killing your own soul. Nobody wins. Just fucking eats you alive. It's it's proper tight. It's absolutely tiring, man. Um, like I said, oh, I've got loads of friends still doing 20s and 30s. One of my friends got released last week. from He went prison 2000. He's done 22 years. He's done seven years of that in isolation. Um, I'm hoping to get him on here soon. He's got a yeah. great story. Um, so we, hopefully we get him on here soon, but he's changed his life around as well. He's trying to do something different. And even after doing 22 years, you realize it's, 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 it's all long. Your family's missed you and no, no one wins. Mm -hmm. So when you're in that life of crime and you feel as if it's normal for many years of your life, so when you come out and start, you step back and you look and start questioning everything, does it make you sad in a way where you think, fuck me, like, you've not wasted your life because you wouldn't be getting the things you're getting now if you never done the shit that you've done, if you know yeah. what I mean? But So you can't really have much regret, but do you question it now and think, like, if, if only I had some, somebody to guide me better, 
because you're not daft, man. Like you're yeah. a very likable character, but it's just sad that people. It's all to do with guidance. But do you question that like, how far you could have been if you had that guidance in your teens? Yeah, um, I was. I was quite. I was pretty good at football and boxing growing up. To be fair, if I stuck at one of them, I'm pretty sure I'd have been either or. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I, I didn't have a lot of confidence growing up. Um, and like I said, dad's been in prison majority of my life anyway. So I had my, my mum to look up to really, whereas kind of needed more of my dad there. But it's, it's not too late. It's not, I'm 36 now, it's not too late. So I'm going to make it happen over the next five years. Yeah. I'm going to get busy. Do you think it's because your dad wasn't there that the, the low confidence comes as well? Do you know what? I can't even blame my dad for all of that because... I don't know where I was going to be because even my friend group used to do robberies or sell drugs. So was I always going to go into selling drugs or doing robberies because all my friends did? Or did I follow in my dad's footsteps? I think I was always going to be around that sort of stuff. Yeah. Bounce or not get you on one of his shows? Bounce. Um, what, fighting? Yeah. The only way is if Bouncer calls me out, then I'll, I'll come on the show, innit? Yeah. Right, then. <laughs> nah, do you know what? I love Bouncer. I've got a bit of a dodgy shoulder at the minute. Keep saying it, but I'd love to get involved with one of these um one of these fights. I was just mm-hmm. talk, Dan was just saying as well. Um I'm pretty sure we can draw some people out. Yeah, I'm gonna start trolling some people on yeah, Instagram. Start, just start calling get start sh- talking shit about people. That's what I am, yeah. I'm gonna start um maybe call out some of them Tawi lot. Yeah, call it See anybody, mate. To. Just call it anybody, mate. Like that's the fun I think. I know these some of these events get a lot of stick because it's not professional, but it takes balls to get under the ropes, man. It takes for anybody to train and willing to listen, you can get seriously hurt, especially if you're not a professional you yeah. as well. You have more chance of getting hurt probably, but it's just you've got to respect the hustle. Anybody that's out there trying to hustle and make waves, like man, that's respect. I respect mm. that. Like it's easy to sit behind the screen and just talk shit. Like how have you kind of dealt with the comments? Because you've had ninety nine oh. percent positive, but. The odd asshole, you don't know who it is. Has, has, yeah. has it triggered you? I've had a, I've had a few. Cause I'm, 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 sometimes I reply back to stupid people, and I okay. shouldn't. I shouldn't even call them stupid. It's just their opinion. Majority of the time, um, they was they was just getting at me, saying, um, "Why does he talk like he's black and stuff like that?" Um, I don't know what I talk like to be honest, but uh, that that is the only sort of uh, negative feedback I was getting. Why does he talk like he's black and stuff like this? And then a few people saying, why is this guy lying? He's telling her he must have dreamt it or something. So a few people had to send a newspaper newspaper um, article to and I had to tag them in it and stuff, you know. And then a few of them messaged me back, said, you know what, I'll take it back. My bad, Yeah, you know. Um, I'm not one to lie. But this know? is the, the world that we're in, especially if you're hitting big numbers and you've done Lad Bible as well now. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah. Well, that just shows you how far you've come. Your story's only going to get bigger and bigger. Yeah. And then when your story's out there, your popularity becomes, and then if you're getting a book out, documentaries, films, like the father and son bank robbers, that's the film. I don't give a fuck with any so, Someone needs to hit me up for that because I'll, I'll, I'll be very, I'll be, I'll be um, well up for that. Um, t- even if I don't star in it, just talking them through it and stuff and that, you know, I think it'd be a good watch or a good read. So when you start making changes, are you, does your dad see that? Because I know your dad's my not, dad not cold, but he's been in the system so long. Where uh, that does he see his son making the changes? Yeah. Like where he goes, do you know what? I'm proud of your son. Like he's, he said it a few times. He said, "Lou, I'm really proud with what you're doing and that. Make sure you keep it up." And you can see it in his eyes when he says it to me. He means it. Mm-hmm. Even my mum says it now as well. How does that make you feel? It makes me feel wicked. You know, it feels like um. Do you know what else is good? I can sleep at night as well knowing my door ain't being kicked in by the police anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, to hear my dad say I'm proud of you and that, that, that just means everything, man. How's your mum? Mum's great. She literally, literally lives five minutes down the road. She's sweet as she's probably watching old Emma Dow or something like that. Does she watch your podcast? Yeah, she does watch it. She really enjoyed them. Um, she done a little sit down with me for my little YouTube channel as well. Mm. Just I spoke to her, asked mum... Um, I just said, I'm sorry for what I put you through. And I was like, what did you, what did I put you through? She's like, stress, depression. Like I mentioned, she went to a mental hospital for a little while and she's come out the other side of it. I said, mom, I love you. And she just says, I'm proud of what you're doing and stuff. How hard does that look when you, that, when you think about that and it's the, the effects of that with hitting the family, with that, with the shite that we do? Yeah, no, do you know what is it is? The biggest reason why I do these podcasts, as well as it's helping me with my YouTube channel and Instagram and stuff, I'm just hoping it reaches to some of the youngsters. 
Like, I don't want people to just think I'm just doing it just to get my face out there, which is helping me for what I want to do. But at the same time, I'm trying to reach out to a few of the youngsters just so they see a bit of sense. Hmm. When you're in prison, how many different prisons were you in again? Over 10. What was the worst one? Um, probably a young offenders called Portland back in 2005. That was absolute chaos. That's that and Belmarsh. Yeah, probably Portland and Belmarsh. Mm -hmm. Have you, any of the screws ever came forward and spoke to you yet? Or says well done? Or? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. A few of them have messaged me on Instagram. I'm not going to say their names and get them in trouble. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, um, one of them's from Scotland. She is Scottish. So, right, right. uh -huh. so yeah, she reached out, uh, said she's proud of that. And um, yeah, a few of them have. Yeah, a few of them have. It's nice. Because I actually got on with some of the screws. Some of them are wankers, but some of them are actually all right and they want to help you. Mm-hmm. What about your own training now? Because you were very big on training inside a prison. Like, you still training as much outside? Um, I've got a bit of a dodgy shoulder. I've been um, seeing like chiropractors and getting sports massages. Like training and working out is my only hobby. And I've not been able to do that since i come out of prison. I've been getting in the gym like once every couple of weeks. And the shoulder problem just don't seem to be going away. How does that fuck with your mental health though? It ruins me. It's my only hobby. It's the only thing I enjoy doing. Mm-hmm. Um, so at the minute I've literally just go for walks and runs what were you at your biggest? 17 stone I was I was lifting some mental weights I used to like I used to squat 200 kilos bench press 180 kilos I was massive my arms were like 8 and a half inches I'm only like 14 now just under 14 and that was without gear? that was without gear that was just loads of porridge loading up on porridge every day what do you eat now? do you know I'm still eating the same food because I enjoy eating tunas and crackers or tuna and couscous um, the missus has been cooking a lot more so um, I'm grateful for that um, yeah but I'm still eating things like mackerel mackerel and toast I bang that at least three four times a day still pot noodles pot noodles Aldi's the spot you just get your noodles throw the tuna straight in quick source of protein and you're ready for your day again so you've never really come out that I'm still I'm still stuck in, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still stuck in it and I don't mind the food I actually still enjoy eating tuna um, I, my missus had a guy at me the other day because I had mackerel on toast for breakfast. She was she come to give me a cuddle and she was feeling like, you stink of mackerel. Mm -hmm. How's your missus and that dealing with it? You coming out, making changes, staying on the path. Like, you, you find that's a benefit having somebody that supports you as well? Yeah, no, she's very supportive and she always says she's proud of me. I think she even messaged me this morning saying she's proud of that with what I'm doing. And um, things are just, just looking up for us. When was the last time you cried? Oh, do you know what? what did it, I think I watched a film with the missus not so long ago. I can't even say it. I can't remember what film it was now. It was pretty sad though. It was a sad film. Love film. I don't even know I now. I, 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 can't, I, can't <laughs> even, I can't even think about it now. But me and I looked at each other. I was like, oh man. Because you seem more emotional today, but in a good way. You seem freer, lighter. I feel, I feel, I feel like um, I'm coming out of myself a bit more. Mm -hmm. like, I don't feel so closed off anymore. Like yeah. before, like I was in two minds whether to come on and tell my story now i just feel open i enjoy talking to yourself like even yeah. we talk on whatsapp and stuff it's just nice the amount of people that reached out to me i just i feel so appreciated do you feel as if you're coming into your true self and who you should have been when you were a kid yeah but you don't need to put on the bravado and do the bad things to try and pretend that you're okay basically yeah that's exactly it growing up i used to be this person i wasn't i was a very very angry person now i'm just like I'm, I'm, I like being silly. I've got my serious side when I need to be, but majority, I like to be silly and people have a good laugh and that. Yeah, because it's all about laughter, mate. And it's it? all like, about laughter and it just gets you through your day, doesn't it? Yeah. Everything, because obviously I, I see your old prison videos and that and you seem to be up for the crack and just fucking I love having it. a laugh. Did that get you through your sentence? I, I swear to God, like in prison, I used to, I used to make hooch, the, the prison hooch. I, I was, used to get pretty good at it. So every cellmate I had, I would make sure we have a party that following week. I would get the hooch on the go, and we'll have we'll have some crazy parties and stuff, or we'll have little work. At one time, yeah, I got the whole wing drunk. I made at least fifteen liters of hooch one day. I need the video because I had the whole wing going absolutely crazy. I gave everyone a liter of hooch each for Christmas. The whole wing was jumping, going absolutely mental. How did you make the prison hooch? I used to get like the bread. We used to have to soak it in the water, extract the yeast from it, put the sugar in it let it cook over and you know what it's, i started getting really good at it but the hangovers from that are mental you'll be hanging for a good three four days of the prison hooch 
Did you feel as if it was worth it at the time? At the time, it felt wicked. Like, yeah, we're having a sick day out today. Did you not put potatoes in it? No, no people use potato skins. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I never used to use potato skins, but I used to have. Um, we used to get some little sachets of. Um, my friend told me that's called champagne, sorry, champagne yeast. Mm -hmm. but you literally just poured it into a tropical juice and left it for a week, and it used to turn the tropical juice into alcohol. But you used to sell that for like twenty quid a little sachet. How's your your friends treating you? The ones that are doing lifers and all that are they happy for you as well? Yeah, like? yeah, I'm still in contact with the with the genuine ones. Mm -hmm. um, still like. Um, send them letters and stuff or if they want some advice because some of them want to come and do podcasts and they want to change their lives and that around as well so they're just asking advice one of them come out the other day finished a 14 um life sentence um hopefully he gets on one soon as well because he's a nice little fellow as well do you think you'll be speaking in schools and prisons soon yeah i think i'm going into a school next week i'm not sure what the schools yet i'm waiting for the information to come back in the next day or so but i'm going into a school next week to do my first talk i can see you doing that but the more you do these talks and the more you're out there, the more everything's just to do with consistency. The yeah. confidence grows. And then before you know it, you'll be sitting in two or three years' time thinking, fuck me, look what a journey so yeah. far. At the moment, I'm in a little boxing gym I'm in Battersea called Carney's Community. They help with a lot of little youngsters from around the state, the little misbehaving ones. So I talk to quite a lot of them now, play a little mentoring role. Mm. So next week I've got them all lined up for a workout in the gym. Um, we're going to do a little podcast actually we're going to have a little talk uh, a couple of the older lot a couple of the younger lot put them uh, have a little discussion then I'm going to put them through their paces um, so I want to do a lot more of that, of that sort of stuff with them do you see a lot of yourself and a lot of these younger kids some of them are really some of them ain't got no manners whatsoever mm -hmm. they're, they're really bad but um, there's, a, there's a few of them I do see myself in and like me they're lacking confidence they don't they don't see that there's doors possibly could be opening for them so i'm going to try and help them see that do you think that's what it all comes down to, is not having the confidence to believe that you're good enough to yeah. do these sort of things because be, having the, the little boisterous attitudes it's all an act it's all it's, pretend it's, it's all it's all an act if you see their faces the other day i brought um hard hitters uk down to the boxing gym it's a little punch machine that goes around the uk they keep asking for you as well actually mm -hmm. I brought them down the boxing gym and if you see all the little kids' faces light up and it, it's like a little day out for them and it really made my day like just to see them all smile on that. So if I can just go down there once a week and just do some sort of circuit with them and look, give them a good little talking to, I feel like I've I've, cheat, I've achieved something. Yeah, like, have you got yourself a five-year plan? Like you're planning for the future or are you only I'm, planning day by day? At the moment, I've been planning day by day. I've finished all my goals and that set from prison I've done, I've accomplished, so I'm going to set some new ones within the next couple of weeks for the next year. Mm -hmm. Start getting things in place again. It's a, a good thing, man, to be here again and just the things that have happened over just, what, the last four or five months? Was it July? Yeah, it's I've just... seen you like, and just kept going. But like you say, it's just putting yourself outside that comfort zone. Yeah. And then you go, fuck me, like, that wasn't as bad as it was. It's not, it wasn't as bad. When I done it, I thought, oh, what have I done? What have I done? <laughs> and then when I started seeing it, I was dreading looking through my DMs and, that and getting looking at the messages and that. The worst thing I'd say to anyone doing podcasts, don't read back your messages, lads. Don't mm -hmm. go back on there and see who's written what. Yeah, that's the hard thing. But again, it's 99% love. It was. I got a lot of support from that. And um, I didn't go through all the message, but some of them I replied back to. But a lot of them, whoever shows support on that as well, I appreciate you a lot, man. Yeah, but people... Like I say, Zella, people genuinely care, mate. Especially for people... Everybody loves a bad boy. End of the day, you are proper back in the day. Mm -hmm. Still be proper now if anybody stepped forward, but that's life. And people respect that. People respect the somebody that's lived their life. You got... Listen, I ain't fucking daft. I got a lot of people on here talk pure shit. Mm -hmm. Just let them talk shit. It's not my job to confront or challenge that. It's their life if they want to talk yeah. shit. People can make their own assumptions. My job is just to guide a story. But you're proper, man. You're well-liked yeah. and well-respected and you're trying to make changes so for anybody that's watching to try and maybe give you a helping hand like come forward like what's all your social media platforms and that yeah so my instagram's big lou gym bars um that's doing all right i'm at 14k now so the numbers have been creeping up and mm -hmm. youtube's big lou gym bars i've got a lot more content to come out i've got a lot of ex-offenders gonna be i've done a few already i've not released anything yet got a lot of ex-offenders taking part little quick interviews quick 15 minute interviews 15 minute circuits and they've been nominating the next person to go next. But that's all it is, man. It's just consistency and chipping them away and having people real life stories. And I believe fitness is a key to any sort of 
great mental health and belief system like yeah mine's just slipped to now but i still feel yeah, good no, mate. This, james we, <laughs> we gotta sort this out mate what are you doing next week i'm down mate what do you want to do you want I think we, you and Simpson, we go we go down bro. that gym, mate. Yeah, sound as a detail. We need to make, we need to make this happen, man. Uh, I'm not having you walking around like that. This time I hear, mate, for the last 15 years, something happens to me, and I, I go fuck it. It's like a six week, eight week blowout, oh, and then cool. January I'll sort it for six weeks, eight weeks. I'm back on the path again until I, I hit Christmas. <laughs> yeah, oh, mate. <laughs> as excuses, mate. I'm looking forward to Christmas. Do people see in prison? Did people put on weight at Christmas? Um, it's a chocolate nah no, not really you know we, nothing we changed like, nothing changed not much we all had the same diet but that's the best meal of the year in prison turkey yeah the turkey the turkey and the, the little what the little bacon sausages yeah yeah oh, the, uh, pigs, pigs in a blanket. blanket all the uh, the Muslim boys and that they'd give me all their pigs in blankets and that so shout out you boys because mm. I enjoyed them what's the this may be a silly question but do you miss anything about being in prison um I, I I I get sad when I think about my friends. Some of my friends who are still in there, uh, I, I do miss the conversations we have. Uh, there's a lot of them who's come out now, and um, we used to have these discussions: what we're going to do when we leave prison. And the genuine ones have all stuck to what they wanted to do. Like like myself, like a few of them have messaged me the other day saying, "Lou, you said you was going to do all of this, and you've done it." Just want to say I'm proud of you. But then you get a lot of fucking shit talkers as well. They've gone back to doing what they're doing, and a lot. Some of them have gone back to prison within a f few months. Mm -hmm. I've done pretty well. I've been out a year now. Last time I done, I think it was six weeks or something, and I went back to prison for selling weed. So I've done pretty well this time. That's the longest you've been out. The longest was two thousand and nine to thirteen, four years. Mm -hmm. But now you've matured a lot. Not I mean like you've you've came a long way now. And it's seen the light. How, how are you dealing with your, your negative days? Um, negative days. Um, I just tell myself, we, we all, we're all going to get these negative days. They come and go. They come and go. And um, they're just, it's just making me a stronger person. And when I'm feeling down like that, I know I'm going to snap out of it within a day or so. So I just tell myself it's not going to last forever. How are you dealing with the pushing through the darker days? Like, do they last longer than the positives? Are you more positive and just believing... I'm so positive now. I just believe so much in what I'm gonna, what I want to do and stuff. Where I can see things happening now, most of my days are just positive. Like I'm really looking forward to next year because I just feel something, something big's happening. I know it is. Yeah, but yeah. you've already had a big year. What well, big things have happened? Like you've learnt. Does that does that make you sad as well when you see what it can be like just living a normal life but a peaceful life i appreciate everything i was just saying to my friend today walking through the park like just looking at these trees i appreciate that tree just being there walking along the river thames i see a seal in the river thames so yeah, I've, I've seen your video on oh, TikTok. Mate, I, was, I was walking i thought it was a little blue staff so i'm i'm, I'm walking down the i'm walking down the thames a little little seals pops his head up i thought it was a staff in the thames i was gonna no, i'm lying i wasn't gonna jump in because it was freezing that day but i wanted to jump in and try and save it and then it's not until i see him go back under and come back up and it was a seal yeah, so what's your TikTok for people to get involved? Uh, my TikTok is, I think it's Big Lou Gym Bars as well. I'm not that active yeah. on there, but I need to start getting busy on there. I've been making little skits, little funny videos and that. Um, they're doing pretty well, actually, on uh, my YouTube channel as well. You know, I'm just like reenacting certain situations, what have happened in the past, but trying to make a positive out of them as well. Mm -hmm. Like the one I've done the other day was about, um, I was peer pressuring another little kid to go and do a shooting, but I kept having little subtitles come up during the little film saying it's not too late to turn back now say no and mm. then i'll keep tapping his chest you're going to shoot him you're going to knock on the door and you're going to shoot him he ends up being the one who gets arrested and i get away and these times he's the one who didn't even want to do it in the first place um so i started up on my on my youtube channel and that's it's not got crazy views but um people they like that like that sort of content do you feel as if that's real life that happens on real life a lot of, a lot of what i've realized a lot of people who are doing these life sentences they don't even want to do it in the first place. And it's the ones who did want to do it, they they get they, they, they're at home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you see a lot of that, friends in prison that they don't want they shouldn't be there really. There's there's a lot of kids, I shouldn't say kids, there's even people my age in prison. I'm thinking you shouldn't even be here. Like you can tell you're actually a good person. Me, I should have been there. I'm I was committing armed robbery, whereas some people were doing like stabbings or shootings, and you can blatantly tell they don't want to be part of that. Mm -hmm. Some of them wasn't even um, the person who pulled the trigger. They don't want to be there. 
But you're saying you're working on your confidence, but to do an armed robbery, you've got to have the most confidence fucking out of anybody. Oh, James, I'll be honest, I'd, I'd look forward to it. Like, I'd I'd think that's going to like, that one's going to have 40, that one's going to have 40 grand in that one, or that one's going to have 25 in that one. Let me get him on a third or fourth run. You start having sleepless nights. And um, I used to have so many registration plates in my head of cash and transits, like doing deliveries at petrol stations or filling up ATM machines at different locations. I used to have sleepless nights thinking that's going to be there on Wednesday. Oh, I can do that one Friday morning if that one don't turn up. How long did it take you to spunk all the money? Did you save or were you just loving uh, the high life? James, see see with see see with this one, yeah. So it's a it was a cash and transit robbery. You know, you take the cassette when mm. they're filling up. So there's filling up an ATM machine. Um usually they hold about hundred hundred grand in. I've took the the last cassette which contained forty five thousand. But I've taken the cassette and um obviously a set off the the money is covered in dye. I've got out of forty five, I've got about three grand out of it. So I don't get much money from it anyway. And what happened after after that? I got an extra year in prison for that money for forty five thousand. So I've got a confiscation order for money that I didn't even get to spend anyway. And I'm still paying it off now. So I've paid off eighteen grand. And while I was in prison, it gained ten thousand pounds interest. So at the moment, even though uh, me and my Cody split the confiscation order twenty two grand each, I still owe them sixteen thousand pounds. So it went up one pound seven a day that I was in prison. So the money you have stole, yeah, it was done with ink. Yeah, you didn't use that, but you still had to pay. I got three grand out of it. There's no way to get the ink off. Um, not really. You know, depends. So, some notes were worse than others. Like you can get away with getting them in little sweet shops and that. But it's just it's just crazy. I went court for it the other day for the, um, the outstanding amount. Like I said, I gave, I gave them uh, eighteen thousand. Um, so I had. Still had another four and a half thousand to give them, but while I was in prison, it went up to eleven thousand pounds or ten thousand pounds interest. There's no way you can get that over tenders. That's what I'm trying to talk to a solicitor about in a minute because there's no, I get paid eleven pound a week in prison to clean the wing. I was like either a wing cleaner or as a gym would leave where mm -hmm. I get fifteen pounds a week. Was that part of your sentence? Pay it back, get a lesser sentence. Yeah, so yeah, um, so I paid about eighteen thousand, and that got me. Uh, it got me like 10 months off my prison sentence or something like that because I was trying to get out for my nun's funeral. So I had, to, I had to phone a couple of lads, listen, borrow me a couple of quid, borrow me a couple of quid. I was like, yeah, of course. So I got to eight grand and that's what got me out for last year, Christmas. Yeah, because it would have been fucking cheaper just doing a 10 month. I wanted, to, you know, it was, I wanted to get out for my nun's funeral. Yeah. My nun's funeral was literally the next day. I said, lads, you got, you got, it's got to Is be done. Is that why you done it? That's why I done it, yeah. And um, the lads come through, come through for me. But I'm still, I still got to give them another blimmin, whatever, 15 grand. But I'll, at the minute, I'll give them 20 pound a month. Mm -hmm. So I told them that's all I can afford right now. And they've accepted it. So yeah, but at least you're paying it back. What, see you there with the ink in them, but they're not, there's not ink in everyone. How do they choose what they're putting the ink in? So is that no, a majority of them are. Majority of them are. Is there? Yeah, yeah, majority of them has got ink in. So see when you're opening one, is there a ways to open them without busting the ink? Um, there is there is ways in that, yeah. It's or just a kamikaze number, just to open. So, it. Yeah, a lot of the youngsters they just do kamikaze and just grab them and smash them open with sledgehammers and that. Like there probably are ways of opening them up and that. Mm -hmm. How hard is that? If you think you've done a good turn, man, you open it up and the doors all ink. Oh, it's pretty devastating to be fair. Mm -hmm. Like um, all of that to, to do a seventeen year sentence and to come out in debt wasn't great, was it? But I'm not even stressing it. Do you know what? I'm not stressing it whatsoever. I know thing, things are turning, um, things are working out just fine for me. Do you have moments in your head when you think about that? That like you've done a seven stretch, you've not been paid, and you end up having to pay back money? Back money that I haven't even got. So the system gaining off you, they're winning so off So the system you. are winning now. They're winning from me now. Mm -hmm. So they're, 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 I'm giving them money that I've not even got at the minute, and I didn't even gain. Has that happened with a lot of people doing robberies? No, like when I was in prison, that is like the, when I was telling the lads and that I got a confiscation order for it. There's like that's the first time I've heard of anyone to get a confiscation order for one of them cash and transits. Mm -hmm. Um, I see some fellas got caught the other day on um on Google actually. They got about four hundred grand worth of money over a space of a year, but I think they're going to get a hefty confiscation order. Yeah, that's a lot. Though. I think there's about twelve codies though. That's a lot. What about 
Who was the guy the UFC fighter again? Murray. Murray. It done. Where did they do? As, 60 as, million, 70 as, million? As a way he's Cody. As a way he's Cody. Uh, um, Lee. Um, yeah, fuck that. Who's is the that? boy that's in a wheelchair? Paul. Is it Paul? Is it Paul. He's training in that. Yeah, right? Paul. Yeah, yeah. Involved at some point as well, weren't they? Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I've got him on my Instagram now. Yeah, actually, same, man, he's training well. He's about inspirational, yeah. making changes. Like, yeah, he's doing his thing. So he's co- Lee Murray's Cody. Like, wh- yeah, Lee Murray. I was with his other Cody Lee. They have a, they have a short, stocky one. What Lee, did he get? Lee Rush. He, I think he got like a twenty-year, twenty or I think he got a thirty-year sentence to do fifteen or something crazy like that. You know, he should be due for his parole any day now. And Lee Murray's still in Morocco. He's still in Morocco, man. I don't think he's getting out. It's a shame, it's man. Bad, isn't it? Yeah. Is yeah. that when you you wait up and question, but the life, like, but if somebody's got a turn there. I don't even. I think they had to leave containers. They had. They left dough. containers of dough and that. Like it's, it seems. It seemed like a good bit of work to begin with, and then you start hearing, oh, they found five million pounds there and three million pounds there. Then I think some woman's going to try and deposit money what ain't even been taken off the tag. The tags ain't even been taken out of. It seemed a, a bit messy after. Yeah. Like they, there was so much money they didn't know what to do with it after that it's too much though isn't it it's too much yeah I'd be alright with a million quid that'd be do you know what I mean sweet mate set you up innit that set me up lovely but I'm not, I don't stress about money as I used to anymore mm-hmm. it's, it's all gonna come see when you see robberies and that in the papers and the news like, does, does your ears perk up though I have, a, I have a little butchers yeah. to have a look to see what's going on and that but um, it doesn't excite me to make me thinking oh do you know I've got one more in me I've, I've not thought that once do you think it's harder now? So many cameras. There's there's so many cameras now and grasses. Yeah, so why why do you think there's so many fucking snitches now? It's, do you know what? Some people just grass for no reason. There's nothing even in it for them. Yeah. I think it's getting worse as well, isn't it? That's why a lot an honest life is the best life. And you you, you hear it people saying it that they can sleep at night. Do you know what? There's what I'd say, yeah. If like people like from my sort of background, like I don't, if it's a straight girl, someone who works a nine to five and they don't live my sort of life and they grass, you know, I've got nothing against them. That's their life. That's how they live. But if you're from my sort of background and you're grassing, you are a proper wrongin. Mm-hmm. But if you're a nine to five girl and you're just a straight girl out and you grass, I, I don't hold it. I'd be pissed with them. But that's their life. That's the way they live. They're not yeah. doing. They're not doing um, both. How's your friends that are in prison doing the big 20 stretches and 30? Like, can they sleep or do they struggle with their mental health or have they just accepted kind of that's their life, they just need to deal with it? They've just got themselves into a proper prison routine now. They've made prison their home. Like I've got a few friends out in another two years. They've got 19 wrecks. They've both done, coming up to 17 years, both of them now. I think they went away 06 or something like that. So they're out in a couple of years and they both seem headstrong. Mm-hmm. And like I said, my other pal come out last week. He's just done a twenty-two. But yeah, everybody's headstrong, especially if they're that mentality to come out of this fast-paced, noisy. Everybody want a PCA. Like, mm. do you think it's more draining out here than it is actually as a very prison? yes, yes, yeah, very draining out here. I find myself by myself a lot. Uh, even though I've got quite a lot of friends. I'm always by myself. Like after here, I'm going, I'm going straight home. Whereas before, I'd probably go and see who's on the estate and stuff. No, I'll just go straight home from here. Do you think it's safer though when you're by yourself and more? I'll be honest, I still worry. Like when I go home and I I know I've not done anyone wrong or anything, but sometimes when I get home of an evening and it's dark and thinking, who's waiting there? And um I still take my time or I might circle around um around my house twice before I go in. Yeah. Is that always a concern? That's always a concern for me. Yeah, I don't think that ever go no matter how, how yeah, like, I'm, old I'm st- go are confident or saying you become a what you do in life because it's not just people enemies it's just mad bastards out there full stop like, yeah it's just I, I don't see it in london though like, i've never asked i don't see it but like, i'm it's, it's hard obviously you hear about it you read about it but i've been everywhere and obviously listen you're always going to get some asshole who test you this and that but it's still a fucking good place down here. There's still a lot happening, but there's a vibe about London now, man. It's not sicky, but there's something, it's not a good vibe about it. Don't yeah. know what that is. Do you ever feel that? Or does it I feel, feel at home? No, nah, it doesn't feel like home for me anymore. You see yourself moving? I have to, yeah. I don't I don't really live around London at the minute. I'm out 
just on the outskirts. So hopefully they keep me out there because I don't. I literally I like coming London just to come and see my daughter and come back out again. Mm-hmm. But it's it's a bad vibe around here. It's not it's not how I grew up. I think it's got a lot worse. Do you think it's everybody's out for themselves now? You see young kids smashing car windows and stealing watches and there's a lot of watch thefts. What would you do if you seen somebody doing that? Would do yeah. trying to rob someone for their yeah. watch? It's none of my business. Yeah, just leave it's, that. Yeah, it's not, it's not. If it's a handbag or something, I'm, I'm not. I wouldn't have it. I wouldn't mm-hmm. let someone rob someone's handbag. But um, all the watch thefts and that, I'd, I'm not getting involved. Is any of the young kids have come forward to try and ask for advice? Um, I've tried to give a few of them advice, and they all look to me like just gave me that look. Mm-hmm. Especially when I first come out, said, you lot can't be doing this anymore. And then there's like, oh, but they've been round our block and done this and so we need to go up there like one of my little friends lost their life the other day in Brixton and the a delivery driver got shot also at the same time or I think he's on his moped or something <sighs> no one wins man like I spoke to I see his dad as well it's heartbreaking to even look at his dad in the face who is it at Battersea in Brixton um it's it's mad you've got Clapham Junction then you've got Battersea you've got Clapham Brixton Stockwell it's just like in this little circle mm-hmm. Um, it's like loads of little blocks are linked up with each other and they, them two blocks will be for that block over there. Um, I, I'm just too old for all of that. How does it make you feel when you see young kids losing their life? It makes me feel sad because one of them lost their life like a couple of weeks ago. I was with him the other day in the cafe. I was with him the other day in the cafe. I was asking him what's going on with the music. You getting, got any new music being released? Got on the news and someone's been shot. shot. Do you feel lucky to be alive yourself though? Yeah, very lucky. I've, I've nearly, I've nearly been shot like five times. I've been in very close encounters. Like my brother's been shot, so I've been very close to like having one in my head. How about your brother? I don't want to say it, yeah, but he's in prison at the minute. Oh, but it's for something what? silly, lads. Listen, so he, it's only he had his dog with him. Mm-hmm. The police were trying to stop him when he's got his dog. My my brother said to the police, "Let me tie my dog to the railing because he's gonna go for you if you put your arms on me." And the police kept coming forward and forward. One of them jumped to my brother. My dogs grabbed the police officer. So they put him away for that. Where's the dog? He's in the dog station, wherever oh, he is. Yeah, the dog. No, do you know what? He they're went not going to put it down, No, they? they're not. Because he went court the other day. And even the judge said he wants the prosecution to relook at the footage. Because he deems the dog as not vicious. Whereas he's on video camera. My brother saying, let me tie the dog up before you arrest me. And mm-hmm. he didn't allow him to do that. So the judge was saying it looks like he's protecting his owner. And you look, don't give him no other option. So oh, that's cool, man. Can you so imagine I've, that, mate, doing a sentence and then your dog gets put down. Oh yeah, fuck everybody else. Yeah, the dogs are the. He's a dogs. lovely. He's a lovely dog as well. What he's kind a, of dog. He's um, he's a half American bulldog, something. But he's got a really fat head on him. Really beautiful dog. He is really um, friendly. Mm-hmm. But like I said, the police are jumping on my brother, so he's protecting his owner. Oh, he's back in six. I remember we spoke about. He's in one spot at the minute, man. He's doing better as well because he, he he come on camera the other day. I had done a little documentary just walking around my estate, and um, mm. my brother's not really one for the camera. I was like, come and tell, come and just say a few words and that on the camera and that. Like what happened? Like majority of these podcasts are about you being shot and stuff. He's like, all right, then cool. And he comes and said a few words. He's done really well. Mm-hmm. Um, he'll be out hopefully before Christmas anyway. Ah, oh, shape man. Hopefully, it gets out. He's then. good. He's sweet as man. I sent him a couple of quid the other day. He's all right. Yeah. How's uh, how? What does he say when he sees you look doing well? And he gives me loads of motivation and says he's proud and that as well. We we even had a sit down and actually spoke about when he got shot because we never had a sit down and spoke about how he felt because mm-hmm. uh, we didn't get no help or nothing. He didn't even get no help after that. So we actually had that sit down and it was really nice. Yeah, it was you needed. Sp- yeah, you spoke about that on the first podcast to say that. You needed that sit down actually. You needed it. And it. Did you just get emotional doing that? Yeah, we did. And he tries to hold it in. <laughs> I think we all do the one. Is... We all do like, like me and my brother always try and play cool. Like, yeah. yeah. But, um, it was nice to get it out of the way and um, to know how we both felt. Yeah. Do you think that's why you feel lighter though, Freya? Because you are speaking <sighs> now about Man. the mad shit that you never spoke about for so many years. There's so many stories I didn't even like even go through like there's loads of other shootings i forgot even to mention and stuff um, but obviously that's the main one and i've let where i've let it go my life's got a lot easier are you still getting jump if you hear like yeah exhaust yeah busting on motorbikes like yeah i still don't like bikes still don't like loud like um loud noises and keys jingling 
always feel like um, the officers at my door in, in prison, yeah. opening my door, doing a cell raid or something. How important that is to speak about your past? You have to. I, feel, I, I, believe, I really do believe just get everything out there. Once it's out, it's out. You can move on with your life. Mm -hmm. it's sad isn't it as well because I've got many friends up in Scotland in prison and they've got so many talents to do anything they wanted mm. and and I always say it, like you're not a bad person because you do bad shit you're just caught up in that fucking loop where it just seems as if it's your only way out you've not got the confidence to make better changes or feel as if you're good enough to do that job because you look at other people and think ah, I couldn't do that you're just selling yourself short because you you can do anything. Listen, if you can do a 10 stretch or 20 stretch in mm. prison, you can fucking do anything. Like, and yeah. that's the thing for the people need to believe, man. And, and I, f I found um, prison was pretty easy for me. If I didn't have my daughter, I probably could have just sat in there, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, there's so much more out, so much more to life than prison. How much do you become a recluse because you, you have spent so many years in prison? What do you mean? Like uh, when you've, you kind of kept away from everything where when you came out you feel like it's it's calmer and more peaceful when you are yourself even though you've got so much it's you can so, do it's so much easier like just to be myself and I just feel so light when I'm walking I was not walking with any weight on my shoulders I'm just enjoying walking down the roads things that things that seem so much clearer to me how is it when people stop you if they maybe want a photo or they want to speak to you about it? I'm all for it. Hey, listen, I'm all for it. The other day I was at the train station. This happens a few times that the fella on the other side, oh, hey, Lou, big Lou, shouting out from the other side. I'm just playing the cool, yeah, you're right, mate, sweet. Mm -hmm. Like, like maybe for really good because there's, uh, there's a young lady there, so she must be looking, thinking, who's, who's this yeah, geezer yeah, sort yeah. of thing. So it's, it's quite nice people recognising me. Yesterday someone took a picture of me on the train. He's into all podcasts and that mm -hmm. he said, to be honest, I've not watched anyone's podcast before. I've not even watched, I don't even watch my own ones back. Yeah. Yeah. It's a mad life, but isn't it, mate, like, where it comes from that people that like, can just have a discussion. But the biggest things on Netflix and stuff is true crime. People want to hear about it, but even though some of it's fiction, this is real life. Yeah. This is the shit that goes on. No matter who you are or what you are, you can't escape from people's decision making in life. Yeah. But what you can learn from is what they, they did from the past, what they're doing now and how, how they made changes. P making changes is the greatest thing in, you can do in this world yeah. for the better that there's people on good paths that slip off and end up on a bad path there's people on bad paths that slip in and do have good paths like there's so many people struggling now with alcohol drugs and think that they're not good enough there's many people caught up in violence and robberies and they think that's their only way there's other options there's other choices it's all down to you it's all down to what you. you want to do and it can be hard especially if you're conditioned into a life where you think this is the only option it's not you've got many many options but it's about s stepping back from that circle of life you're in actually looking at the bigger picture and taking advice from people who's lived that life mm -hmm. but it must be when your friends are in there thinking fuck me let the flu can change i can change that yeah. they become an inspiration for your yeah. friends and that's an important thing that you probably never thought that would be the case five years ago never never but how does that then make you feel like when you, you look back you think fuck me what a year so what would it be like five years ten years if you keep just chipping away just got to be consistent Where, whatever you want to do in life you you have to be consistent with what and know what you want what do you want to achieve out of this within a year or two years what do you want out of it mm -hmm. I've, I've just been so consistent with what I'm doing oh, it's, James it's going to happen man it's going to happen I really want a movie role someone needs to come and get me I need to play a movie role for someone but just keep I'm doing well, what you're I'm doing. Well up for it. Just keep doing what you're doing. You're on Lad Bow. You're on here again. We've got other things in the pipeline. You've got your own YouTube channel. Get yeah. your TikTok, Instagram, everything's just small steps. The only thing is we concentrate on a big finishing line. Mm -hmm. Want this now, tomorrow, yesterday. It doesn't yeah. happen that way because it, there's got to be something. When you achieve something, there's got to be something to try and achieve again. Yeah. Or else you just stop dead. There's got to be new goals, new visions, new beliefs. And then once you start gaining that confidence, once the ball starts rolling, which it already is, then you can achieve anything. You can be wherever you want to be. Yeah. You can be surrounded by whoever you want to be surrounded with. Because it doesn't matter. You can be sitting fucking anywhere with mad people you'd never thought you'd be sitting with. Yeah, I went to a, um, a Channel 4 launch party the other day and mm -hmm. people was recognising me like uh, Steve-O the Madman. 
Mm-hmm. He's quite big on Instagram and he come over and said, hello. He's like, oh, Louis, it's good to be on this side, isn't it? And I was like, yeah, like, come and shook my hand. A few other people come and said hello. I was like, this is crazy. Like, yeah. this is a bit of me. You know, not that I was showing off or anything, but I was thinking, this is what I want. This is where I'm meant to be. Yeah, that's your life, mate. That's your yeah. partners. And even though a lot of misery in the past, you've still got to thank it because it's led you who you are. I see you and your dad having books and films and I seen there being a partnership there. Even the family life with your brother in again, that's just all part and parcel of the, uh, maybe your brother will go, fuck this man, what am I doing back in here? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? My brother's older brother's been doing so well as well. Up until they come and got him the other day for the dog incident, which wasn't even his fault like that. He's been doing so well. I've even had my little brother out the house. Alfie's been out the house, had a table tennis thing with him um, not so long ago. He actually come on camera and done a little bit of my documentary for me. I said to Alfie, what, what's it like having your big brother out? And he was like, well, we've not had the police here, so good, I suppose. <laughs> Bless him. The, uh, how is your brother, wee brother getting on? Alfie's, Alfie's doing all right. He's just in, in, his, in his room with his Chelsea top on, just playing his computer and that. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's, he's, he's a wicked character and that. But you're, you're doing well, mate, so I'm proud, I'm proud of you as well. Like, I appreciate it, man. Six months is a, a long time, like, obviously... Well, five months, a year you've been out, but five months since you were on this the first time and everything you've said you've stuck to. Yeah. And you're only, you've only got stronger. You've got more confidence. You feel lighter. Yeah, you the, feel freer. So whatever you're doing is working. Yeah, the Just, confidence is such a big thing, man. I've had a few people like um, message me saying, oh, you didn't talk like this on the James English thing. But like, what well, I'd like to say that to that, you learn to adapt to people you're around. And I'm quite good at adapting to certain situations or some people don't realize I'm doing skits sometimes on Instagram. I'm mm. messing about. So they think I'm being a little rude boy from off this day. I'm like, it's actually a mess around thing. All right, lads. So stop abusing me. Yeah. But people are just, people yeah. just like them on bro. But like I say, if this is what happens after a year, then what's it going to be like in three years, five years, 10 yeah. years, the world's yours, brother. Like, for anybody that's maybe wanting to help you get involved, like, how can they get in touch? Yeah, please just, uh, feel free to message me on Instagram, Big Lou Gym Bars, and um, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I've got a lot of stuff coming. Um, look forward to having you in the gym soon. I'm there, brother. Simpson as well. Can't wait to see get you boys in the gym, man. For anybody that's struggling, mate, like, what advice would you have for them? For anyone who's struggling, man, um, the first thing I say is be yourself and learn to open up. If you've got, if you've got a friend you can go and talk to, just go and talk to them and... I always enjoy long walks. I get people sending me videos on Instagram, just them just walking. Lou, I've gone for a walk today. So listen, just go and appreciate some scenery, go for a little stroll. And if you're feeling that low, just go and ask for help. Yeah, listen, bro, for coming on today, this is just a kind of catch up for what you're doing, what you're achieving and how far you've come. Like we've got other things in the pipeline, which mm. we'll, we'll get involved with in the next few weeks. That we're going to we're going to the more nitty gritty side of things. But yeah. today's just a kind of catch up, see how you are, which you're flying, mate. And I'm proud yeah. of you. Tired today, though. I've really been grafting all day. Yeah, mate. Could. But listen for coming on again. <laughs> nice, I appreciate it, man. I'm proud of you. For anybody that's want to get involved, man, we'll leave the links for your social media in the description. But proud of you, brother. Keep going, man. And I look forward to seeing what you do in the future. Appreciate it. Thank Cheers, you. Bro.